Christmas time, a good time, a kind, forgiving, charitable time. Indeed, Christmas time is not the time when most of the populace expects to hear a ghost story, and I will endeavor in this ghostly little story to raise the ghost of an idea, which shall not put you out of humor with yourselves, with each other, with the season, or with me. I only wish that it might haunt you pleasantly. For Christmas time is a pleasant time, the only time I know of in the long calendar of the year when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut-up heart freely and to think of all people as fellow passengers to the grave. never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe that it has done me good and will do me good. And I say, God bless it. before the fire and began to eat his gruel. Soon, he noticed a faint tinkling of an unused bell that hung in the corner. One by one, every bell in the house began to ring out and ring out loudly. 
Suddenly, Scrooge heard footsteps heavily thumping up the stairs, and with them a clinking noise as if a person was dragging a heavy chain. A ghostly figure floated through the locked door. It was Jacob Marley, bound in chains and dragging behind him a trail of cash boxes, keys, ledgers, deeds, padlocks, and more chains rot and steel. Though he saw the death-cold phantom standing before him, Scrooge fought against his senses and growled, You're humbug, I tell you! Humbug! At this, the spirit cried, I have wandered the earth for seven years as punishment for neglecting the needs of my fellow men. I have come to warn you that you have yet a chance and hope of escaping the same fate. by three spirits, Scrooge. Expect the first tomorrow when the bell tolls one. Then the ghost of Marley floated through an open window into the bleak, dark night. Scrooge slammed shut the window, went straight to bed without undressing, and exhausted, fell asleep upon the instant. Scrooge awoke. It was still quite dark and extremely cold. Perplexed and deeply bothered, with a mix of dread and astonishment as he thought of Marley's ghost, he asked himself, was it a dream or not? As the clock struck one with a deep and melancholy toll, Scrooge all of a sudden recalled Marley's promise of the first ghostly visit. At that, the curtains of his bed were drawn apart by a strange, childlike figure, dressed in white, from whose head sprung a bright, clear jet of light. I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? Scrooge asked the glittering figure nervously. No, your past, it replied softly. What brought you here? asked Scrooge, nervously. Your welfare, said the ghost. Rise and walk with me, he said. And taking Scrooge's hand, the two gently floated through the window. Instantly, the ghost transported Scrooge to the countryside where he had been raised. The city had vanished, as had the darkness and mist. What you see are but shadows of things that have been. Recognizing every gate, post, and tree, Scrooge was brought into his old school, empty, but not quite deserted. Indeed, Scrooge wept as he saw his poor forgotten self as he used to be, a solitary child left behind. The ghost motioned toward the classroom door. It opened, and a little girl darted in. It was Scrooge's little sister, Van. Father has sent me in a coach to bring you home, dear brother. Home forever and ever. Scrooge reminisced, sadly, that Fan had died as a woman some years ago and had but one child, his nephew Fred. In but that moment, the schoolhouse was left behind them, and Scrooge and the ghost were now in the busy thoroughfares of a city at a certain warehouse door. The ghost asked if Scrooge knew it. Know it? I was a apprenticed here. They watched as a jolly Christmas party ensued with dancing, singing, and merriment all around. Ebenezer, now a grown young man, and his fellow apprentice Dick Wilkins were leading the way, and with them the jovial old merchant Fezziwig. During the whole of this time, old Scrooge's heart and soul were in the scene and with his former self. He remembered everything, and he enjoyed everything. Quickly now, my time grows short, said the ghost as the scene faded to the past. Scrooge immediately saw himself at a different time when he was slightly older in the prime of life. There was an eager, greedy, 
restless motion in the eye. He was not alone, but sat by the side of a fair young woman named Belle, in whose eyes there were tears. You have changed, Ebenezer. A golden idol has displaced me. And so, I release you for the love of him you once were. At that, she handed him her golden engagement ring. Spirit, why do you torture me? No more, no more! But there was more. Taken to a more recent Christmas, Scrooge saw the same Belle, now a comely, middle-aged matron, surrounded by her delightsome and loving family. As he watched, Scrooge was flooded with dreadful awareness that he was quite alone in the world. Tormented by these scenes from his past, Scrooge exclaimed, Remove me from this place, spirit! Take me back! Haunt me no longer! The light of that ghost was extinguished. Immediately, he was back in his own room and sank into a deep, 